It's weird the things we remember, right? For example, I can vividly remember being sat in a history class and listening to a classmate read out her response to a question that we'd all just been sat quietly answering. Now, this is something like 20 years ago now, and I can't even remember what topic we were learning about. I can't remember what the question was or what I actually wrote, or even what she wrote for that matter. But bizarrely, I can remember where I was sat in class, I can remember the other student's name, even though she wasn't a particularly close friend of mine. It was Suzanne Baker, if you're wondering. <laughs> but what I remember most of all were the feelings that I felt and what I was thinking at that time. And my overriding thought was, how does she write like that? Accompanied by some thoughts of, well, I can't write like that. And well, that just isn't me. I don't write like that. Interestingly, I wasn't thinking, I wonder how I could write like that. Because it's kind of crazy the limits we kind of put on ourselves, isn't it? So there I was feeling a little bit in awe and a little bit nervous in case the teacher was to pick on me next to read mine out, which didn't happen, thankfully. thankfully. But what I now think, most interestingly of all, is that on reflection, I was just resigned. Resigned to the fact that that just wasn't me. I simply accepted that I didn't have the confidence or the skills to write in such a sophisticated, high quality way. I figured it was just some sort of natural gift. Now, of course, I know now, after over a decade of teaching national and state exam marking, including specifically even for year 12 state writing tests, which <laughs> I never would have believed if you'd have, been, if you'd have told me I'd be doing that when if you'd asked me back then, I now know with absolute certainty that it isn't about who you are or how much of a natural you are at writing. What it is about is essentially putting on a bit of a show or performance for the marker by putting into action a set of specific techniques, some simple strategies and tricks so that you can craft amazing responses in whatever genre or style a task demands. For example, in an analytical essay, essay, students should be using longer compound and complex sentences, using fully expanded wording and technical vocab that gives that formal and official feel. And it will give the impression of a confident, competent student in that subject. But then for a blog or a feature article or persuasive speech, a more casual writing style is needed, which is achieved with things like more colloquial language and contracted words like it's instead of it is. Plus, it's a good idea to use a few short, sharp sentences with maybe a bit of purposeful repetition for impact. Because students need to write in the way the task and the criteria demand. And there are simple tips, tricks, and techniques to do just that. They don't need to be a natural writer or a wizard with words. And they certainly don't need to slave over grammar books or read novels cover to cover to catapult the standard of their writing. And if I'd realized that back then and known these key strategies and, of course, how to enact them, and when to use them, I could have definitely written as well as, or maybe even better than Suzanne Baker. I'm Katie Price, great transformation expert, and if you'd love your team to have all the steps, strategies, tips, techniques, and tricks to writing like an A grader, then check out my Write Like an A grader training. It's where I give your team everything they need, all the tools and all of the explanations, tutoring and examples of how to apply them so that they can be one of those students who can write with confidence and sophistication. I'll include a link to the training in this blog post so that you can go and check it out. And until next week, let's make this a fantastic week.